I've got the joy of the Lord, and it's working in me. I've got the joy of the Lord, and it's showing in me. I've got the joy of the Lord, and it's plain to see. I've got the joy of the Lord, I'm so glad I've got the joy of the Lord. I'm Bill Mays, and it's an honor to be able to present to you this Bible study on the book of Philippians. This is lesson 16, and it is probably covering what might be my favorite Bible verse. But anyway, again, speaking on behalf of the Crumb Church of Christ, we thank you for choosing to be with us this day and watch this Bible study. I hope that you will be able to Go to the email that contained the link to this Bible study on YouTube and print out the attached PDF uh, Bible class outline that's entitled Rejoice in the Lord Always. And it's based upon Philippians 4.4, 4, which I just got to admit probably is my favorite Bible verse in this wonderful book of Philippians. Now... We want to begin by just looking at our scripture reading of one verse. And there it is. Philippians 4.4 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. By the way, I can recall in grade school English being taught that when you're writing things, you're not supposed to repeat yourself. Because when you say it once, that's enough. And the only time you repeat yourself is for matters of great importance. And here we find this is a matter of great importance to Paul. And so he repeats himself. In fact, this is not the only verse where he repeats himself that we will note uh, again later. Now, our purpose in studying this lesson is learning how to be able to have and keep the abiding joy of the Lord in our lives. Philippians 4 is the final chapter of the book. And in it we find Paul giving encouragements that are both specific and some general in nature. Now we've already looked at Philippians 4 verses 1 through 3 this past Lord's Day where Paul has some specific encouragement to individuals that were there in Philippi. And now here in Philippians 4.4, 4, we find the first of several encouragements which are certainly needed by all Christians today. You may recall that joy is the key theme in this letter to the Philippians. No less than 16 times in this book, Paul uses the word joy or some form of it. And so let us review that. In Philippians 1.4, he writes, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all. 
In Philippians 1.18, What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and this I will rejoice. Yes, I will rejoice. Note he repeats himself in that verse. Philippians 1.25, Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you for all with you all for your progress and joy in the faith. Philippians 2, verse 2. Make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintain the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Philippians 2, 17. But even if I am being poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrifice and service your faith, I rejoice and share my joy with you all. No, the idea of rejoicing is found twice in that verse. Philippians 2.18 You too, I urge you rejoice in the same way and share your joy with me. There's rejoicing twice. Philippians 2.28 Therefore I have sent him all the more eagerly, so that when you see him again, you may rejoice and I may have less concern about you. And in Philippians 2.29, Receive him then in the Lord with all joy, and hold men like him in high regard. And then we go to Philippians 1.3, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things again is no trouble to me, for it is a safeguard to you, or for you. It's just a good reason for repeating things that are important. Philippians 4, verse 1. Therefore, my beloved brethren, whom I long to see, my joy and crown in this way, stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. And then in this review, we have twice... Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice in Philippians 4.4. 4. And then there's Philippians 4.10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, now that at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you're, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. Uh, that's, that's a lot of rejoicing verses. So in this study... We are now going to consider a few observations about just this one verse. Rejoice in the Lord always, Philippians 4.4. 4. And so first we want to notice that joy is to be experienced, this joy is to be experienced always. In other words, this rejoice is not just an occasional experience for exceptional people. But in darkness as well as in light, in trials as well as in triumphs, we rejoice. In James 1, verses 2-3, through 3, we find James saying, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And Paul writes in Romans 5, verse 3 and 4, And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, Knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance proven character, and proven character hope. So you see, this rejoicing is not just for the apostles, but also for all Christians. And again, I refer to you James 1, verses 2 through 3. We find in 1 Peter 4, verses 12 and 13, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing as some strange thing were happening to you. But to the degree that you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that also at the revelation of His glory, you may rejoice with exaltation. Now, the revelation of His glory is the judgment day. And so, in other words, we just keep on keeping on. We rejoice with whatever the world throws at us, whatever the devil uh, tries to hit us with, because it just makes us tougher and stronger and draws us closer to the Lord. You know, if, it, if anything that, that this COVID-19 pandemic has done, it has reminded us in patience 
instructing us strongly in patience and also reminded us of our need to rely on the Lord, not on ourselves. Well, let's consider the example of Paul who found joy always. In Philippians 1, 4, always offering prayer with joy in my ever prayer for you all. Here Paul found joy in the proclamation of the gospel, even in adverse circumstances. We find here in Philippians 1.18, What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in this I rejoice. Yes, I will rejoice. I remind you that Philippians is a prison epistle, meaning Paul was in prison. And here he here was Paul preaching in Caesar's household as a prisoner. Paul also found joy in the unity of the saints. We find in Philippians 2 verse 22, Make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintain the same love, united in spirit, intent, and one purpose. I like the oneness there. One mind, one love, one uh, uh, unity, and one purpose. Or one spirit and one purpose. So those, those four ones in that text are, is a, makes it a great text. Paul found joy also in the prospect of being a martyr for Christ. Now Paul was not suicidal. He was just ready to give his life for his Savior if that is what it required. And so we find here in Philippians 2.17, But even if I am being poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I rejoice and share my joy with you all. Now the sacrifice and service of your faith mean Paul was given his life for the preaching of the gospel to others. And if that cost him his physical life, so be it. Paul also found joy in his brethren loving each other as they should. And so we find here in Philippians 4.10, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. Truly, Paul rejoiced always. But what was his secret? What was the source of his abiding joy where he was always rejoicing always? Well, here it is. This abiding joy is found in the Lord. Now, there may be a temporary joy on this earth, such as in drugs, uh, including uh, alcohol and tobacco products, or in sexual pleasures, whether lawful or unlawful, or in material acquisitions. But these are at best like riches, which make itself wings like an eagle that flies towards the heavens, Proverbs 23 verse 5, in other words, doesn't hang around long. Or at worst, are the passing pleasures of sin, as we find in Hebrews 11, 25. The joy that abides is only that which is in the Lord. That which is that which comes from personal living and a fruitful relationship from the Lord. In other words, abiding in the Lord is is a daily choice. It is a life to live. It is the Christian life. For in the Lord, we enjoy peace with God. We find in Romans 5.1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Lord, we also enjoy help in times of temptations. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, we find no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man and God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you'll be able to endure it. By the way, for so many people who are saying, Oh, I'm so tired of being at home with nothing to do. And so I want to remind you of all those times you thought, oh, if I just had more time to read God's Word and be a daily Bible reader. 
Now you have it. Use that time. There's no such thing as not having proper time. Uh, intelligent people are never bored. I used to just tell my daughters that when they say, Daddy, I'm bored. I say, intelligent people are never bored. Now I'll find them telling their own children that very same thing. Now, Philippians 4.13. Here Paul said, I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. We can only do that if we are in the Lord. You see, in the Lord we can also enjoy the assurance of God's companionship in time of trial. Consider now Hebrews 13, verse 5 and 6, where we're taught, Make sure your character is free from the love of money. Be content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. So that we confidently say, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? See, these are the sort of things which provide a true and lasting joy in the life of a Christian. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to experience this kind of abiding joy? Well, why don't we? Why do many of those who are supposed to be in the Lord often find themselves lacking joy in all circumstances? Hmm. Perhaps it is because there are often hindrances to abiding joy. It might be memories of past failures or awareness of present faults. Such often leave people in a state of discouragement or dis depression. Paul, however, provides the solution in Philippians 3, verses 12 through 14. He writes, Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay a hold of that for which I, for which also I was laid hold of by Jesus Christ. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, Paul was always pressing in the direction of heaven. You may realize your imperfections, yet I, Paul's encouraging us just to press on to better things. There are times when you need to forget your past failures and reach forward to future successes. I'd also suggest that a hindrance to abiding joy can also be a natural temperament or disposition. And by that I mean some people seem to be naturally pessimistic, gloomy, unhappy, sad, or depressed in temperament. I must admit it, it challenges me to be in the company of such a person for a very long time. You got to wonder, is it through some genetic predisposition towards such an attitude? Or, or is it through environmental influences that possibly one sustained while growing up? Or is it just a personal choice by some to be grumpy? Well, I want you to know, in Christ, we can choose to be in a better way. We can be transformed, Romans 12, 1 through 2. And then we can produce the fruit of the Spirit, which includes joy, as we find in Galatians 5, verse 22. Another hindrance to abiding joy can be maybe depressing circumstances. It is easy to be joyful when everything is going well, but when things go wrong, well, that seems to be a different matter for some. We see from the Scriptures that even... Challenging times can be a time for rejoicing if we had the right perspective. As James puts it in chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. 
And let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. You see, the perfect result of enduring trials is that it makes us stronger, tougher, and more resilient. Another hindrance to abiding joy can sometimes be due to sympathy with others. Well, certainly a compassionate heart cannot be untouched by the hardships of others. And so we find Romans 12, 15, that we are rejoiced with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Therefore, during these moments of sorrow, let properly spoken words of comfort and counsel provide a joyful rescue from the hardships that others are bearing. We are taught in Proverbs 16:24, pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. In many ways, I consider the book of Philippians to be the great counseling book of the Bible. And I challenge you that when you're down, Read a chapter from the book of Philippians. Well, to conclude, rejoice in the Lord always. What a great thought and scripture for us to meditate upon. It does not mean one is to be insensitive to the harsh realities of life. It does mean that one does not let the dark realities of life blind a person to the radiance of joy that is found in the Lord. Have you found yourself going through life without abiding the abiding joy that's discussed in our text? In 1 Peter 1, 6-9, Peter defines such joy as inexpressible meaning hard to explain or express with words here in verse 8. Make sure your relationship with the Lord is what it ought to be by rendering complete obedience to His will. And then let the guidance of God's Word give you a proper view of life so that you will rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I thank you for being with us for this Bible study. If we of the Crumb Church of Christ can be of any help to you spiritually, please contact us. Go to this web address. Find our email address. Let us know what we might be able to do for you spiritually. We love you. We thank you for spending this time with us. Let us close with a prayer. Dear God, please bless us to be able to rejoice in you always. Help us, Father, be rejoicing people even in difficult times by keeping you foremost in our hearts. Father, we thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your blessings. Help us, Father, to always be reminded of the patience we need to have for the ways of this world. We pray, Father, for your blessings be upon us. Forgive us of our sins. Help us to live in a pleasing manner before you. Help us be forgiving of others. Dear God, we pray for your joy to always be present in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. We love you so much. We hope you'll be with us this next Lord's Day for another Bible study lesson from the book of Philippians. And I hope you'll be, you will choose to be with us this Wednesday for another Stepping Stone lesson. God bless.